It is nuclear today. That is the topic, the main topic du jour in Canberra. Let's bring in the Deputy Opposition Leader, Susan Lee. Susan, good to see you. So looking at the reporting this morning about uh, nuclear sites that have been identified, does this all have approval from the party? Well, we'll go through our normal processes. We'll consult with the Australian people and we'll have more to say later, as you've indicated, Pete. But let's face it, Policy in this country around energy under this government is an absolute train wreck. We are paying the highest electricity prices in the world. You've just noted on your program that today is the coldest day so far this year. There will be Australians who are choosing between heating and eating. There will be families who are wondering whether they can pay their electricity bill or feed their family and fill up their trolley at the supermarket. These are real issues that real Australians are facing. And with 90% of baseload power due to exit the system by 2034, the government has no answer to that. So we want cheaper, cleaner, consistent power and we've said that nuclear should be part okay. of that mix. Just um, on the nuclear policy though, uh, will there be a, a, a phone hookup next hour that will ultimately decide whether it's approved or not by the party? Pete, I never talk about our internal processes. Well, it's been reported there, um, so you confirm that? Can you confirm that? Can you confirm that? Well, lots of, things have, lots of things have been reported. Lots of things have been reported. I think it's clear that there will be a conversation and there will be an announcement later this morning. And I urge people who care about the future of this country, who want a policy around energy, around electricity, around manufacturing, which is my particular area in opposition. I stand on factory floors across this country every day and I see that we've got record insolvency insolvencies three times as many in the manufacturing and construction industry okay, so going out of business. So where will they go? This so you, two years of labour so government, you'll the highest stamp it this number morning? of insolvencies. Where will they go? That's the big question. Where will they go? Well, you, you wouldn't expect me to have a scoop at 7am on your program, even why, though I'd why, love to Why not, Pete. Susan? But what I will say is that we will consult. We will consult <laughs> with communities, unlike this right. government, that is forcing renewable energy solutions on communities like the Hunter, like the southwest of WA, with offshore wind that communities have not been consulted on. So consultation is critical to this, and it, we've always said that, and it will remain at the okay. core of the policies that we bring forward. So in the Matter. Yeah, no, no doubt. In the past, national seats in Queensland, plus you've got the Hunter in New South Wales, they've been earmarked. Uh, are we on the right path there? They'll, they'll be announced today? We've said that it makes sense to connect new nuclear technologies to existing brownfield sites where you have the grid already in place. OK, so the Hunter is one. So the New South Wales Premier said a moment ago that he won't support I'm not, it. No, I'm not naming them, Pete. Let me, let me uh, be clear. Okay. Oh, the New South Wales Premier, I wish that Chris Minns was focused on the cost of living for the people of New South Wales. Clearly he's not. By the way, he does have a nuclear reactor in the suburbs of southern southwest Sydney. It's called Lucas Heights. It delivers nuclear medicine technology that everybody in this country would know someone who's benefited from that, particularly with cancer treatment. Yeah. He's also had to extend the life of his coal-fired power stations because he knows that he has to keep the lights on in New South Wales.